Um, hello everybody. Um, so my name is uh, Nicolas Cangela. I'm uh, presenting uh, with chair. Uh, it's um, it it may be a slightly different presentation than the others. It's not really about uh, presenting uh, you know research uh, results. Um, it's really it's a bit like a pitch for a new project. The project is really brand new. We are actually building it. So I'm trying to, I will try to explain you the idea of what we're trying to build. Um, so uh, as the subtitle says, uh, it's uh, an independent academic chair crowdfunding platform, uh, meaning it's a, it is a crowdfunding platform um, that will try to finance uh, research and um, higher education projects. So let me try to step into the details. Well, uh, what we are, um, the, the, the initial problem we're facing is that uh, basically public universities are being subject to budget cuts. The, the, the truth is that it's not just public universities. You could replace public universities by a, a lot of other things uh, which are uh, financed uh, typically by governments. And um, But again, if we go back to public universities, uh, in, the, 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 the lack of money and the budget uh, restrictions um, affect research. You know, it's difficult to keep uh, on doing some uh, research. It's even more difficult to open new area of research. And on the education side, um, it's becoming difficult sometimes because you have less faculty staff and you have potentially more students. So uh, there's less money, so we need to try to find money. Um, in, the, in, the last, um, in the last years, uh, the solution has been to, uh, to basically uh, add uh, private companies into the equation to help at financing uh, research and universities. It's, 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 it's a pretty decent solution, but it's, uh, it's not a perfect solution in the sense that um, these uh, financements are very, these fundings are very competitive and very difficult to obtain. Um, and basically it's only the, the, the best, on, <laughs> it's only the best universities that will get those financements, which is good, but you know, the others uh, still need some financement. And as a matter of fact, we also observed that at some point, uh, those, fin those fundings uh, are only uh, for some certain period of time, and then you go, have to go back to public funding. Um, and also when you deal with, uh, you know, private companies, there's, um, they tend to favor applied research, which is fine because it's aligned with their uh, goals. Uh, but at the same time, we still need to keep on financing some longer term research because it's, it is still relevant. Um, and well, finally, uh, s there are some potential difficulties when you deal with companies. Uh, you know, there are potentially some conflict of interest and you need to make sure that uh, there is no, uh, you will not damage the, credi the credibility of both the scientists on one side and, and of companies on the other side. Um, so well, uh, again, private, public-private partnerships are fine, uh, but it seems that it's not enough. So what we're trying to um, propose with this project is, um, is what we call the 4P model. Uh, the public, private, and people partnership, meaning we need to we are pretend we need to bring people, we need to bring the crowd into the equation to help at financing uh, research and education. So uh, how do you do that in uh, 2016? You do that with a crowdfunding platform. Uh, because um, because that's, uh, the, the crowdfunding, a crowdfunding platform is um, we believe well suited to bring on board both the, the crowd, the people, the normal people, and, and their money and their interest. But also it can bring the public institution and the private institutions, all of these people in one place, and they could potentially discover and support some uh, you know, new research and um, education projects. So that's exactly the, the, the goal of the project and that's exactly what we are building right now. I'm um, sorry I can't actually uh, present that to you live, but it's, it's, it's coming soon. Um, this project um, 
basically we're building this project not as a, as a for-profit company, but we want to build it as a non-profit uh, Swiss foundation, as a matter of fact. Uh, why Swiss foundation rather than an association? Uh, even so, right now it is an association. Uh, it's um, to make sure its uh, goals uh, can can not be altered, basically, because the the, the Swiss Foundation have nice uh, it's a properties in terms of uh, not changing uh, their goal and strategy. But uh, certainly, most of you know that better than me. I'm just the, the technical guy, anyway. <laughs> Um, we are building also these companies on uh, on some uh, this this um, this foundation on some uh, values like what we want is to share uh, this new funding resource uh, to the community of uh, researcher. Um, we also want to support the development of science as um, as a common good. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll talk. But that a bit more um, very soon, and want to also commit to a sustainable information society. Um, I, I need to talk about the, the yeah the benefit of this approach um, because uh, as uh, my colleagues explained earlier in crowdfunding, uh, there is one uh, case which is the the, the reward based case, and um, in a way our project of crowdfunding science uh, is a, re a reward-based uh, crowdfunding scenario in the sense that there are rewards, but they are a, a bit, um, they are not, you know, it's not, you will not get a product if you support a research project, but you will get some other sorts of, re of, of rewards. Um, Okay, one, 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 um, one benefit, obviously, uh, is not just money to support research, but it's also to create a community and to uh, engage, again, uh, people with science um, and basically uh, communicate about science and help at educating people about science. Um, what we want to uh, also, as an effective reward for supporting uh, research is to uh, favor um, what is called open notebook science. Um, meaning uh, open notebook science basically it's, uh, it's, it's about uh, communicating as a scientist what you're uh, doing uh, as a researcher so as, so as to explain to well, the crowd but also um, your everyday work and to share the data you have so that you can so that other scientists can potentially reproduce what you you have and potentially challenge it and um, it's it, it's a, tr a certain trend in science these days and it's uh, it's it's pretty good because for let's say the general public it can help at educating them uh, and make people understand that science it's not just always an established truth but it's uh, you know there are people working on that and there are debates uh, as it's being done it could also potentially help at um, yeah, reducing some potentially ambivalent media reporting. And um, we also want uh, to, with this platform uh, in, and in the way it will be implemented, to uh, favor uh, open access science and open source uh, science. Um, for a number of reasons, like uh, catalyzing uh, collaboration between um, between researchers, helping uh, dissemination of results, uh, potentially also popularizing uh, research to the public, and um, basically what we believe is that open the, the open knowledge uh, that will be created through. Um, Open access science and open source science will, in any case, have a, you know positive spillover uh, on the private sector. So it's, I mean, it's good. You guys, uh, I mean, nowadays I think you can start to open science, um, and it, it it will be good for everybody. Yeah, maybe we can talk a, later about uh, the concept of uh, open science because I I don't know if you're aware of that. Um, but any, anyway, uh, opening, opening science and opening the source code, by the way, when, whenever there is source code, opening the data that is being generated um, is potentially one of the 
reward uh, that you would get, uh, that you, that that uh, the, the the crowd and the people would get when they finance a research project. Basically, if you are actually financing a project through crowdfunding like that, you would ensure that the research results can be opened. Um, there's also one thing um, which we hope could be a consequence of uh, having a you know general uh, crowdfunding platform for research it's basically to stream streamline the research funding and to centralize the you know the funding process because uh, it's it's a real pain for a researcher um, to get funds because it's lots of different uh, you know formats and lots of different uh, you know uh, institution to which to submit project proposals to get money and it's uh, quite a waste of time and at some point if some platform emerged to bring on board both the crowd but also public institution and also private companies and if everybody can potentially support research in one place and basically with one format maybe everybody's life could be simpler so um, yeah uh, <laughs> my plan is yeah, to keep it short <laughs> um, so, um, so yeah. I mean, these 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 are part of the yeah the the, the benefits um, that uh, that you, that we can put all get you know as a community from uh, supporting uh, research. Um, now, um, ah, yeah, that's the short uh, yeah that's the short uh, presentation. Well, anyway. Um, uh, the, the, there, are, there are some questions potentially uh, that maybe should be left for uh, questions. Uh, I mean, for the open discussions is, oh, okay, what about the concern? What about, uh, what are the drawbacks uh, if we start to support, to, to, to have, let's say, the crowd that is non-expert people trying to finance something which is typically uh, the field of experts, meaning science, uh, will this, for example, one, one of the drawback would be, will this lead to a race to the bottom? Uh, it's a nice, con that's a reasonable concern. And um, as a matter of fact, this project is really like an experiment. We need to experiment with that and, you know, find out if it's the case or not. I mean, if it, the question is, will that kind of financing approach will this uh, support more uh, let's say popular problems already or at least for example would will it support only those projects uh, for example related to uh, human health which is pretty important we need to solve a number of human health projects but some less uh, popular uh, research projects may be also of relevance how do you communicate about that to get the funding um, at least for now, we're optimistic because uh, you can see from results from um, in the field of uh, culture and in the specific field of uh, theater projects that as for uh, some studies seems to show that uh, basically the, the crowd and the experts tend to um, have the same kind of decisions. So let's hope that uh, having a uh, some people support a uh, research project will not again lead to this race to the bottom uh, there are as a matter of fact a number of other potential uh, you know questions that uh, that uh, that, m that may pop up uh, when you think about financing research uh, with the help of the crowd but i guess we'll leave that for the discussion so that we're on time um, so th that, that would be it for me. We are a team uh, basically based in Geneva working on this project. Uh, everybody's you know, doing different things. Uh, it's being uh, initiated by the Professor Jean-Henri Morin, which is a, a professor at the University of Geneva. I'm more of the technical guy here, so I'm not the best for presenting in that, but um, I can still answer question anyway. Here it is. Thank you. Contact. <laughs>